step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you wanna get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at ChompaCasino.com. Test your luck in the shadowy world of the Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play the Godfather, now at ChampaCasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. See terms and conditions, 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 3. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the program, as always, text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. Get the podcast, the live stream, all that. I, I I feel obligated to say uh, subscribe to the podcast for when you miss me live, you can catch up the number of people who have uh, called in lately and asked for stuff. And I'm like, I, I've, I've already, we cover breaking news. I've already talked about it. You, you got to go listen to the other show. So get the podcast. Now I'm going to do something here and I need you to, to promise me, promise me. You're going to show me a little bit of grace. I'm going to need grace for what I'm about to do. Because I'm about to say something that some of you, you might keel over dead when you hear me say it. Mom, mother of mine, I'm sorry you're under the weather today. I might need you to just sit down for a minute because I'm about to say something that I, I I understand what it what it can do. The power of my words to cause people to have apoplexia, to to have uh, arrhythmia, to have heart palpitations. Particularly, what I am about to say because I mean it sincerely. All of you, you 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 might need to you you might need to just just sit for a second because I mean it sincerely. I mean it honestly, and I don't want y'all to cancel me for saying it. I need to say, in all sincerity and candor and honesty, thank you. Uh, Oh, God, I got to say it. Oh. Thank you, Hillary Clinton. I know. I said it. (laughs) In all sincerity, thank you to Hillary Clinton. She went on The View yesterday, which is a pretty pro-Hamas group. And I got to play you some of this. I, I, I'll say this, save, save this for a little bit later, but um, don't cancel me for this. I, I want you to actually listen to this, particularly Sonny Huston, the, the idiot, uh, who tried to, to prattle on the pro-Hamas talking points, and Hillary Clinton shut her down and defended Israel. Of all things, Hillary Clinton defended Israel and did so to a audience that was hustling. You could hear some of the, the smattering of applause from the pro-Hamas people in the crowd and they were it was uncomfortable applause drowned out by the applause of the pro israel people i i, I got to tell you i'm i'm i want to thank her for going on the view to a hostile audience and defending israel but remember there was a ceasefire on october 6th that hamas broke by their barbaric uh, assault on peaceful civilians and they're kidnapping, they're killing, they're beheading, they're terrible, inhumane uh, savagery. There was a ceasefire. It did not hold because Hamas chose to break it. So you have to keep several things in your head at the same time. And that is number one, Hamas is a terrorist organization. It has made very clear it is committed to uh, the elimination of the state of Israel and it has consistently broken ceasefires over a number of years. 
Israel has a right to defend itself, as any country would. Ukraine has a right to defend itself against an invasion, an unlawful, inhumane invasion by Russia. And Israel should conduct itself by the laws of war and do everything it can to prevent and limit civilian casualties. Those three things are all true themselves. And so when I said a couple of weeks ago that it wasn't time for a ceasefire because it would enable Hamas to rearm and reposition, uh, because I, I've been to Gaza, and Gaza is a highly populated urban environment, and what has been going on now for a number of years under Hamas rule is the building of over 200 miles of tunnels under Gaza, the storing of munitions, all kinds of explosives under hospitals, under refugee camps, under civilian targets, the use of civilians uh, as really just tools of war um, by Hamas. That has all been going on. And so when I said you could not have a ceasefire uh, people didn't understand that Hamas would use it for their own purposes. Mm -hmm. I think we're now moving toward a position where the idea of these humanitarian pauses that the Biden administration has been promoting are now, I think, on the table and should be. And what would that mean? Well, first of all, let's remember over 240 innocent people, not just Israelis, people from other countries. The, the second biggest number of people taken by Hamas are workers from Thailand who were working in agriculture. So this is a multinational hostage situation. A humanitarian pause would enable two things to happen if Hamas would agree, and that is let the hostages go. Yeah. These are innocent civilian people. They should not be held as you know captives to Hamas and let in more humanitarian aid that actually gets where it's intended, not into the hands of Hamas. Listen, applause for her for that. And notice how quiet those, those hens were. They, they didn't talk over her until that idiot racist Sonny Houston decided to chime in. And listen, Hillary Clinton diplomatically, diplomatically shuts her down. Is, uh, is, is a very popular concept, not only in this country, but around the world, mm -hmm. because we're seeing the death of at least 10,000 innocent Talks about collective punishment. And half Listen of to how few are, people were clapping. Half of those are uh, children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So former President Obama said, um, quote, and, you, and, and collective punishment is against international mm -hmm. human rights law. Um, so former President Obama said, quote, if you want to solve the problem, then you have to take in the whole truth. Mm -hmm. And you then have to admit nobody's hands are clean here, that all of us are complicit to some degree. Is that, in your view, a wake-up call for Democrats? Uh, a lot of the international community agrees with him. Do you agree that the Israeli government, as well as the U.S., are part of the problem as well? Don't you, don't you think we're all to blame for this and it's collective punishment of the Jews is bad? Do you agree with Barack Obama? Listen, I mean, she's trying to say, don't you think America sucks and Israel sucks and, and, and Hamas is really just responding by resistance? Um, <laughs> Hillary Clinton shuts her down. Well, I think that the problem predates October 7th, and I right. think that's what President Obama was talking about because let's remember – this is a very long and complicated history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband, with the Israeli government at the time in 2000, offered a Palestinian state to the Palestinians, at that time uh, run by Arafat, yeah. Yasser yeah, Arafat, right. the PLO. and the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which, by the way, took out of its charter violence against Israel. Mm -hmm. So you've got to separate the Palestinians who believe that there is some future of peace with Hamas, which believes it has to destroy Israel. Yes. Those are two it's different yes. organizations, right. and they have to be viewed in that way. Arafat turned that down. There would have been a Palestinian state now for 23 years if he had not walked away from it. There was another attempt I'm when sorry. I was Secretary of State to try to, you know, bring the Palestinians and the Israelis together. That didn't work out. 
Israel left Gaza in 2005 just and, and forcibly uh, ejected 50,000 Israelis who were living in Gaza. What? Wait, they say, Sonny Houston says that they've been occupying Gaza. How is this possible? They left all of their infrastructure. They had a big infrastructure of greenhouses where they were supplying fruits, vegetables, flowers, etc. And, pal you know, the Palestinians deserved to have a yes. productive, successful economy in Gaza. Hamas came in and basically destroyed all of that and killed a lot of other Palestinians. So I think when President Obama says that, it requires us to look at the history. And of course, history holds all of us accountable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is a fair statement. But today we have to look at where we are. And I believe it's imperative, since we have had numerous ceasefires with Hamas, all of which they have violated, to try finally to dislodge Hamas and allow the Palestinians to have other leadership that will actually once again work for a two-state solution, which it should be the outcome that we all hope and pray for. Notice how much louder the applause is there. Look, I... I I can quibble with some of what she said, but she had the opportunity to go on The View. Notice how they bring on a progressive to educate the audience. Notice how quiet they were. They didn't interrupt her. They allowed her to talk until Sonny wanted to try to bl shift it to a blame America first tactic. This, 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 listen, she had the opportunity to do that. You didn't and I didn't. We can quibble with things that she said, but she got the opportunity to go say it. And what did she do? She pointed out Hamas has the hostages. Hamas broke the ceasefire. Hamas is terrorist. Israel has the right to defend itself. Israel has the right to take out Hamas. Hamas is using its citizens as human shields. Hamas is killing its own citizens. Israel left Gaza in 2005. They forcibly evicted 50,000 Israelis. When have you heard that said in the last month, except by her on this? Israel left behind all of its infrastructure and greenhouses and, and food supply productions, and Hamas destroyed it all and killed their own citizens. Who have you heard from the left say that? Who have you heard from the left? You certainly haven't heard Barack Obama who took a blame America first approach. You haven't heard Joe Biden say that. You haven't heard Joe Biden make that case. Hillary Clinton did a better job than Barack Obama, Kamala Harris, or Joe Biden, or Anthony Blinken, or John Kerry, or any other Democrat when he came to that. Hillary Clinton did it. So yes, in all sincerity, thank you to Hillary Clinton. I don't want to die today. I don't want to be killed anyway. So yes, thank you, Hillary Clinton. Now spare me. But nonetheless, in all seriousness, y'all, in all seriousness, she deserves to be thanked for doing that because that audience and their viewers would not hear that from anyone else. They haven't heard it from Obama. They haven't heard it from Biden. They haven't heard it from Nancy Pelosi. They haven't heard it from Anthony Blinken. But Senator Clinton, Secretary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, who they love and respect and feel sorry for because the Russians stole the election, whatever you want to say, they'll listen to her, and they did. And to the extent she just put a bug in their ear that Israel is not the bad guy here, despite what that idiot Sonny says, that was worth it. To point out that Yasser Arafat could have had a nation and rejected it. And to point out Hamas has all these hostages, and they're not just Jews, people from Thailand and around the world. She got the opportunity to do that, and she hit that out of the park, and she deserves our credit for doing so. She deserves our thanks for doing so to persuade some people who otherwise might not be persuadable that Hamas needs to be destroyed, and they do. So in all sincerity, thank you to Hillary Clinton for having done that. Guys, if you're a small, mid-sized business, you're struggling with HR issues, you have employees not showing up, or you got to do a termination, you need onboarding of employees, maybe there's a sexual harassment complaint. You want an HR manager. You don't want to be the bad guy with your employees. Bambi can play the role of HR for you. $99 a month, available by phone, email, real-time chat. They do onboardings, terminations. They help your team members get to peak performance. And your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations, regardless of which state. They're great. Now, they're U.S.-based. 
They, you got somebody to talk to who's dedicated to your team. They give you access to HR expertise, and they add personal touches. So even though they're outsourced by your company, they really feel like they're a part of your team. That matters. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. When you sign up, it'll help my show. Bambi.com, B-A-M-B-E-E.com, Bambi.com, Eric Erickson in the podcast tab. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Ron, let's go to you next. Welcome to the show, Ron. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Great. What's going on? Um, Well, I'm curious as to how Israel is going to win a war against Hamas and or Hezbollah when the financing and training armaments are coming from Iran without actually engaging Iran complicated by the fact that our idiot president and the one before Democratic President Obama keeps giving Iran money. I don't quite understand how Israel is going to win without actually going to the cause of all this, which seemingly I think everyone would be in agreement is Iran. That's a great question. I'll listen to you. Thank you, sir. It, our, yeah, absolutely, Ron. Thanks. Um, th- so there are short-term and long-term issues. The short-term issue is the retrieval of the hostages and the eradication of of Hamas in Gaza, which Israel can do. Probably needs some assistance from us, but Israel can do that. But you're right, Ron. They they have Hezbollah to the north funded by Iran, and they now have the Houthis in Yemen who have been given uh, ballistic missiles that can launch to Israel. Now, for those of you not familiar, let me explain this one to you. Yemen is the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula. It is uh, very significantly far from Israel. It's hundreds of miles south of Israel. And the Houthi rebels who have been leading a civil war in Yemen backed by Iran have been attacking Saudi Arabia and also Israel. They now have rockets that they've been able to launch, missiles that are ballistic missiles that actually get into space, low Earth orbit, and come down in Israel. And Israel has the technology that's been able to blow them up. But the Houthi are firing at them, Hezbollah is firing at them, Hamas is firing at them, all of them funded by Iran. To solve the ultimate problem, you have to solve the Iranian problem. And part of solving the Iranian problem is to convince the American government to stop dealing with Iran. Remember, uh, Iranian agents have infiltrated the Biden administration. It's true. There's a massive report on the number of uh, Iranian sympathizers and people suspected of being tied to Iran who have been in the Biden administration, including the chief of staff of the assistant secretary of defense for special forces, special operators. And they've left a lot of those people on the payroll. This has to be a wake-up call to the Biden administration, and behind the scenes, it apparently is. Behind the scenes, it apparently is. But the short-term problem is the elimination of Hamas, and Israel can do that. The long-term problem, though, is going to take a concerted effort to shut down Iran, uh, possibly even a change of leadership. I don't think we need to attack Iran, but there are ways to undermine uh, Iran that we need to do. We also need to undermine Bidenomics in this country. Americans for Prosperity is working on doing that. They're building up a coalition of people around the country to help them fight Bidenomics. And how do you fight? Well, you, one, provide solutions to combat it, and two, you also explain to people how bad it is. And Americans for Prosperity is doing that around the country. They want you on their side. They'll train up an army of activists, including you. They'll teach you how to approach your neighbors, door knock, go to city councils, go to boards of education, Go to your state legislature and explain how to combat binomics through deregulation, through other reforms, to make your economy in your state outperform Joe Biden's intended economy. All you got to do to join them is go to AmericansForProsperity.org slash Eric. Americans for Prosperity. 
They're a do tank, not a think tank. They go into the states and they do the business of the conservative movement. They fight for freedom, free markets, and free people. They believe in limited government. If you believe in limited government, they're a great place to spend your time with. Americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, believe it by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, I am exceedingly happy to have you. I want to talk about history, and in particular, a historic event. In the 1950s, after World War II, Germany was divided between East and West, but Berlin was internally divided between the Western powers and the Soviet Union. East Germany was a communist gulag, and people were fleeing from East Berlin into West Berlin, uh, and they had a demarcation line, and, and you would be shot on sight, and in 1961... Almost overnight, the police constructed what became known as the Berlin Wall. It was a wall where to this day, on August 13th, it's known as Barbed Wire Sunday. They began installing barbed wire entanglements to stop people crossing into West Germany. And then they built the physical wall. They built this physical wall to keep not West Germans out of East Germany, but to keep East Germans from fleeing. It's a testament to the United States of America that to this day, people are trying to get into this country to be free. I... Look on the border situation in this country, and and I'm appalled by it. It's a national security issue. It's a humanitarian crisis. But also, I'm a little flattered. People want to come to this country. Some people for ill. Most of them, they just want freedom. They want to come to the United States to be free, and I, I appreciate that. The Berlin Wall was erected to keep people from crossing to the West. Many people tried. They were shot. They were tangled up in the barbed wire and left to die. You could hear the gunshots when people tried to escape. There were a lot of people who fled. There was at one point a Berlin airlift that John Kennedy organized to save the people of West Berlin from starvation as the uh, Soviets blockaded uh, getting into East Germany. You were allowed to fly over East Germany. They couldn't stop you going to Berlin. And he organized an airlift for supplies. There were a number of crossings and people tried to cross. My God, people tried to cross. The number of people who tried to get out 5,000 people successfully defected. The death toll is over 200. The East German government would shoot anybody trying to cross. They had shoot-to-kill orders. Do not hesitate to use your firearm, not even when the border is breached in the company of women and children. This is a tactic that traders have often used. They, the people wanted to leave. They never, they never wanted to answer the question of why. They just designated them traitors. And they wanted to shoot them on sight.
They dug tunnels. They built hot air balloons. They slid on aerial wires. They flew ultralights. They drove a sports car at full speed through the fortifications. In one location, a metal beam was placed at checkpoints to prevent defection by race car. Up to four people drove under the bar in a sports car that had been modified to allow the roof and windshield to come away when making contact with the beam. They laid flat. They kept driving. So then the East Germans built zigzagging roads at checkpoints. The sewer system predated the wall. Some people escaped through the sewers. 29 people escaped through a tunnel to the west. 70 tunnels were dug under the wall. Only 19 were successful in allowing fugitives, over 400 people, to escape. The East German authorities installed seismographic and acoustic equipment to detect the digging of tunnels. In 1962, they planned an attempt to use explosives to destroy a tunnel, but didn't carry it out because it was sabotaged by a member of the Stasi who himself defected. An airborne escape was made by Thomas Kruger. He was an East German youth military training um, trainer, and he defected to a British air base on the West Berlin side. If an escapee was wounded in a crossing attempt and lay on the death strip, between the two walls, there was this area of land that was open where the East Germans could gun you down. It was called the Death Strip. No matter how close any Westerners were, they couldn't approach to help because the East Germans would shoot them too. Guards would let fugitives bleed to death in the middle of the ground. Peter Fetcher was 18 years old. He crossed from East Berlin to West Berlin in the Zimmerstrasse. He was shot and he bled to death. The Western media recorded it all on the 17th of August, 1962. It created so much publicity that even the Soviets were shocked and ordered restrained shootings. On February 6, 1989, Chris Jeffrey tried to cross. He was shot, killed. Actually, he had a homemade natural gas-filled balloon, and it crashed, and they shot him. I say all of this, and I bring you this history, because 34 years ago today, the Berlin Wall fell. And it fell nearly unexpectedly. It fell overnight. Activists with the fall of the Soviet Union and the collapse of East Germany began just chiseling away at it. And then the, the West Berlin government brought in cranes. They started tearing it down. The East Germans joined. They reached through from one side to the other. They started shaking hands. 34 years ago today, Germany began the process of reunification after this division Those walls were designed to keep people in. Now, I support a border wall that is designed to keep people out. The West Germans were happy to have the people who came over. But events change things. Events change things. The enemies became friends. Events change things. But we should take note, I think, at a time when so many people in the United States hate the United States, blame the United States for all the world's ills, there were people willing to die to cross the no man's land in East Berlin and come to the western side, come to Checkpoint Charlie, come to West Germany, come to the United States. They wanted to come here. We didn't want to go there. They wanted to come here. We should not be ashamed of our country. There's a growing sense of people on the right that America is no longer good. We've always been under the judgment of God. We've always been sinners. We've always been fallen. But now they're like, look at look at all the people who support abortion and all this stuff. We're just not a good country. We get what we deserve. I, I, I don't think so. That's the loud people on social media you see, the loud 
uh, progressives who, who brag about it in coastal areas. Certainly there are rotten areas. I mean, the Bible is full with theology about how bad cities are. You see these progressives crowded in these cities that are falling apart. They've always been that way. It's more in your face now. But in the heartland of this country, there are so many good people, so many patriotic people, so many people who love this country and freedom of the Lord. They're not bad people. They don't deserve the rebuke of the right for being somehow bad. But they have incur- they have engendered the scorn of the left for actually being patriots, by being decent people, by going to church, by being farmers, for tending the land, the hunters, the farmers, the conservatives, the Christians, the churchgoers, the homeschool families. The private school families, the left hates them all. The left hates this country. We shouldn't be like the left and engage in hatred of this country. This country, people died to get here. And they got here in a sliver of land controlled by the United States through a point called Checkpoint Charlie. It's still there today. You can go to Checkpoint Charlie. You can see it. It's a tourist exhibit now. It's an anachronism, anachronism of the la- of, of a decades past. It, it's outdated. It's outmoded. It's not used. You can see it. You can see where the wall was. You can see how the wall divided a city. You can see portions of the wall. You can see it all, and you can know it. It was from one side people were free, and the other side people were enslaved by communists in the same way that China enslaves people today. And so many of the young people on college campuses in this country today who are marching in the streets for Hamas and the so-called Palestinian cause, they're on the side of China. They're on the side of the people who built that wall. They're on the side of the people who shot people trying to be free. And they don't even realize it. They don't realize it because their college professors have brainwashed them and indoctrinated them into a culture of hatred of this country. We're a good nation of good people. And if we put our mind to it, we're a great nation. And to this day, on our southern border, there are thousands of people who are coming here to live a life that so many people in this country take for granted. They're yearning to breathe free. I don't think they should come that way. I don't think they should. I think we should send them home and tell them to go through the right process. But I'm kind of proud of our nation, that we're a nation where people are still crossing desert and jungle to get to. No other country has that. No other country does. Sure, there are people fleeing to Europe from from Africa, but they'd flee from Europe to get here if they could. They can't, but they would. We're the destination for the dreamers, for the people who yearn to be free. And we shouldn't forget that. 34 years ago today, the Berlin Wall, Wall fell. Germany began to reunite, and our values won, and that should matter. Now, there is breaking news that I've got to bring you. Joe Manchin, senator from West Virginia, is announcing that he is not going to run for the United States Senate again. He says he'll fight to unite the middle. He will not seek re-election. He may decide to run as a third party for president. There is a rumor he will run as the no-labels candidate, possibly with Mitt Romney. Joe Manchin, senator from West Virginia, announced he's not going to run. He was behind in the polls. The man who's never lost an election was losing to Jim Justice, the current governor of West Virginia. Uh, The Republicans will pick up that seat, so the Republicans will be one seat shy of a Republican majority in the Senate. So now you got to look at Arizona, you got to look at Pennsylvania, you got you to look at Montana and John Tester. John Tester, deeply vulnerable. We've got great opportunities to save the Senate. And frankly, the way things are headed on the election side, on, on, on the electoral side for the presidency, we need to pour every penny we can into taking back the Senate because either Donald Trump or some Republican is going to win and we'll need to confirm judges or they're going to lose and we'll need to stop Joe Biden. We got to save the Senate. Now, the breaking news: Joe Manchin not going to run for president, or not going to run for the Senate. Rumored to be running for president as a third party. That'll hurt Joe Biden. Recently, ten regional banks have had their credit downgraded. Now they're still making profits. The government's probably going to bail them out. Might sell them to a bank that's too big to fail. Big Farmers Bank in Iowa just collapsed. This is continuing to happen, despite them telling us everything's hunky dory out there. Swiss America has been sounding the alarm about the secret war on cash and all that assault on our freedoms. You got soaring interest rates, squeezing the economy, banks teetering on collapse. Swiss America can educate you on ways to protect your hard-earned assets right now. All you got to do is go read their report, The Secret War on Cash. It's completely free to you guys. You can get it by calling my or texting my name, 
to 800-289-2646. You call 800-289-2646 and say Eric Erickson sent you, or you just text Eric Erickson to 800-289-2646. The all-out war on cash is spreading. Go read The Secret War on Cash. It's free to you guys. As I said, you mention my name, Eric Erickson, by calling or texting 800-289-2646. That's 800-289-2646. Or you can go to SwissAmerica.com slash Eric. That's SwissAmerica.com slash E-R-I-C-K. Message and data rates apply. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. I got to play you some audio. This is from Secretary Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security. So the, the situation at the border, you're saying, is not a disaster. That is correct. So the U.S. Senator asked him, you're saying it's not a disaster at the border? He says, that's correct. Um. Marjorie Taylor Greene has introduced an impeachment resolution. He should be impeached. Frankly, I think the Republicans should have spent more time focused on impeaching Secretary Mayorkas than on uh, Joe Biden, because I think most of the public is too cynical to appreciate the Biden allegations, but understands the border's a problem. And by impeaching Mayorkas, they highlight it, and Greene is smart to introduce that resolution. By the way, I've also got to say this. You know, Matthew Dowd, not a brilliant guy. He at one point worked for George W. Bush. Then he left him, got alienated by him, became a real progressive. Listen to this audio of Matthew Dowd talking about uh, Donald Trump versus Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House. Don't get dragged down into the mud pit and, and, uh, and where the Republicans want you to go about forcing you to sort of pick a culture of either a multiculturalism or, or one culture of white America, whatever it is. Do not allow them to drag you in to this sort of cultural basement that they want to drag everybody down into. And the third thing I say is, and I'll uh, reiterate what uh, Claire just said, Mike Johnson, more people are going to know about Mike Johnson by November of 2024. 24, many people are going to know about Mike Johnson as know about Donald Trump. It's absolutely amazing to me that with trying to remove Donald Trump, they, they heightened Mike Johnson, who on many ways is way worse than Donald Trump. Don't you just love it when they do this? That Mike Johnson is way worse than Donald Trump. Ron DeSantis is way worse than Donald Trump. Nikki Haley is more dangerous than Donald Trump. That's the one I've heard lately is, is more dangerous than Donald Trump. Really? Really? Uh, that it's, 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 it's way worse, people. Way worse. This is kind of where they always go, don't they? that it is somehow way worse to go with someone other. They want Trump so bad. They want Donald Trump. They are desperate for Donald Trump. They they absolutely. Now, the reason they want him, you do need to understand, the reason that they want him is because they, they, they've convinced themselves he's beatable. I'm not sure that Donald Trump is beatable. I think Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden. I think it will be resource intensive, uh, which is one of the reasons I discourage it. I think you'll have to push harder to get him across the finish line than uh, a DeSantis or a Haley. And so that frees up more energy to win the Senate. With Joe Manchin leaving, that's the breaking news happening. Joe Manchin will not run for reelection. It hands West Virginia to the Republicans, giving the Republicans an easy pickup so they can focus on other seats. I just think it's a no-brainer to find someone who's not as much a heavy lift to get across the finish line as Trump. Your mileage may vary. That's fine. We can disagree on that. But I do think he can win. And I think the Democrats are deluding themselves. When you got a guy like Dowd saying, oh, my gosh, these other Republicans are so much worse than Trump, what he's really saying is, is hey, guys, pick Trump. We'll take him out. There is part of, yeah, I got to be honest, confession time. Part of me just kind of loves the, the th- throw, throw Br'er Rabbit in the briar patch sort of mood. And then suddenly he wins. 
and the epic meltdown from the media and the left would be hilarious after all the energy they put into making sure he gets the nomination so they can beat him. If he won, it would be hilarious. But I still think someone else wouldn't be as heavy a lift, and that would help us with the Senate and the House. That's just me. But now the Republicans have an easy pickup in West Virginia, thanks to Joe Manchin retiring. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.